Welcome back to the Alcohol Free RV. Today we're in the kitchen, but it's not for something fun, unfortunately. Normally I like to be cooking in here, but today we have a repair. So stick around and I'll show you what we've got going on. We noticed a couple of days ago that there was water in our silverware drawer. Now, I thought maybe I didn't dry the spoons off well enough or whatever, but it happened again. So we're gonna have to take a look and see what's really going on. Now, I did take a look and what I found, see if we can zoom in here. I don't know if you can see that moving. I think you should be able to. And there's water right around here. And the caulking is separating from the countertop and the, and the sink basin. So we're gonna have to go ahead and get this sink basin down, taken off, and re and re-supported. So we'll get to it. I've already taken the doors off the hinges here and everything uh, off of the front portions of these cabinets. Um, those are just screws, so no big deal. And if you've never seen how a sliding drawer comes out, there's two little tabs when you pull it out all the way. And one side is gonna be pressed up, and the other side will be pressed down, and then it'll come right out. While I'm taking the rest of these drawers out, now would be a good time to click that subscribe button so you can see other repairs and mods like this. Now what you're looking at here is the underside of the sink. So this is the side of the basin that was leaking. And what I found here is this bracket is a little bit loose, which allows the sink to move, which is causing that caulking to not want to hold up anymore. Now typically on a residential sink you have, or any under mountain sink, you have a, a series of these clips that do the job of supporting the weight. Now unfortunately in this RV there's only four of these. There's one here, there's one on the opposite side, and there's two more in the back which hopefully you can see right about here. I don't think that four is an appropriate number. Typically a residential is gonna have at least two on each edge of the sink. So we're gonna have to find something that's going to allow us to support the sink properly. Now, unsurprisingly, when I went to the hardware store locally, I could not find exactly this bracket. This is the exact one that came off of the bottom of the sink that we have. And so I had to improvise a little bit. What I found in actually the plumbing section, this is a basin holder, much more heavy duty. So what my plan is gonna be is to take this and install this along the edge of the sink and then repurpose the ones that are along the edge to provide additional support on the front and back of the sink. And my plan is to use some of these brass insert nuts. And basically they are a nut that accepts a standard bolt on the inside, but the outside has a really coarse thread, which is intended to screw into your material. So I'll be drilling a hole that this will screw into, and then I should be able to Put the bolt, put the bolt through my bracket and thread it into this nut. When doing a repair like this, especially where you've got sealant that is old and worn, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and get all of that sealant off. To do so, I'm gonna to need to disassemble the sink in its entirety and hopefully get it out. So I'm going to be taking off the parts where it connects to the plumbing so that I can do that. Okay. 
Your plumbing probably looks a little bit different. I've upgraded ours, but generally the process is gonna be the same. You'll disconnect whatever's connected to the bottom of the sink, and you may be able to kind of get some things out of the way here so you have room to work. Now I'm not taking the brackets out completely all at once because I want the brackets to still support this a little bit as I remove the other clips. Looking at this, it appears we've had this problem for a while. Just finally broke free. There's a lot of really gross and possibly mildewy, moldy stuff here. But we'll go ahead and get the sink cleaned up, and then we'll get the bottom of the countertop cleaned up and get it reinstalled. It's damp all the way around this basin. Nice thing is the silicone sealant, I'm assuming it's silicone. Whatever sealant was used is generally coming off of here pretty easily. So we're gonna make sure that we use a high quality kitchen and bath sealant. When we install this again, 100% silicone. Make sure we get a nice good seal on that. So I've gotten all of the mildew mold and old silicone off of the lip of the sink. So we'll turn our attention to the actual countertop and see how we need to get all the rest of the caulking off of that. Removing all the existing caulking was by far the most challenging and time consuming portion of the project. It took me over an hour to remove everything so that I could start thinking about reinstalling the sink. Now that I have all the old caulking removed from the bottom of the Corian, I'm gonna look at seeing how I can attach the big bracket here and I've marked this drill bit with a bit of tape so that when I go to drill if I hit that uh, tape that's the depth I want to go I'm just going to scribe a little line there Somewhere in the middle of that, I'll drill my first hole. What I'm trying to do with this first one, we'll see how it works, is I've placed several washers on a bolt and then the brass insert. So hopefully I'll be able to screw that in. get a wrench, I think it might. Let's put a washer on here and see how this goes. I'll be able to adjust that as need be. So I think I'll do the other one here.
Okay, now that we have the sink basin back supported by those brackets, um, I feel like it's ready to go and to get the silicone sealant on. Now what I like to do is just get a little bowl of water so that I can moisten my finger to kind of even things out. And then we'll just put a bead all the way around underneath this gap with the intention that it's gonna basically fill it's basically gonna you know squeeze a fair amount back out but that's okay because it'll give us a good good seal Now, I'm gonna go ahead and align this thing up. And I'm just trying to finger tighten these bolts that I installed. And before I tighten everything up, I'll align things so we get even reveal. And then I'll try to tighten the bolts down the rest of the way. Now, I'm going to moisten my finger and basically clean up the edge of the caulk. And I'm just trying to clean up anything that got on the top surface of the countertop before it dries. Now that I do see that there are a few places on this side that probably could use a little bit more, but I've got to figure out how to install some sort of clip to hold that up. And also I need to secure the two clips that are here and here. So I'm going to do that right now. Right, once everything was in place, I went ahead and just Retrimmed the clock off the edge of the counter and sink joint just in case any additional stuff came out. From the bottom, I have this nice heavy duty bracket on this side. Similar one, or same bracket on the other side, similarly installed. I've tightened down the two brackets that are in the back. And then to do the front, I had to get a little bit creative with the parts that I had in a short time. And so what I did was I drilled a new hole in one of those same brackets and started screwing it into the uh, front face of the cabinet and then put another one just pressure fit inside of there between this bracket and the wood in the opposite orientation. And that provides enough upwards pressure to keep the sink sealed up against the countertop. And of course, everything else is install opposite of removal. So I'm just checking to make sure that all of my drains are tight. And I think we're ready to let that sealant dry and then uh, get life back to normal.